Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is bolt, float this off, but up here there's not room for a bolt float, um, and the mud's real tight. It was the first mud out of the truck. And this other mud has got more moisture in it. And I'll just work, it, work this in. Once I get out here in the flat, there's a lot more moisture. But time is of the essence. Now I'm going to jump to the three-foot bull float. So we used to tamp concrete. We don't really tamp it anymore. Uh, maybe for foundations. One thing we do now is we just jiggle the bull float like this. It kind of helps flatten stuff out. To get rid of the rocks, we can also just kind of tamp it back a little bit like this. Again, I just really uh, do not wish to put water on this. I'm going to get another pole real quick. And lower the angle. So with a longer pole, I get a little bit more wide out of it. And notice we're both floating across the way we rotted it. Just leave it up against the edge. Because again, the first order is to get this somewhat sealed up. As soon as I bolt up this, I'm going to hit it with steel, the Fresno, to seal it. So that's good enough for now. It's kind of uh, well floated for the most part. I'm going to hit it with steel real quick just to seal it up to give myself a little bit more time. back to the top, let it roll, and grab my wallet for this guy. Alright, so here, I started sealing it up with a Fresno. And I don't know if you can see from that camera angle, it's pretty smooth here, and right there it's kind of rough. So what that tells me is that's a low spot. So I'm going to get the shovel, get a little bit of mud, and just kind of pitch it in there a little bit. I'll keep the shovel here with me on the upside. Continue to seal this up. So I put that mud in that little crease or trench, and that pretty much flattened it out. So I hit it with wood again. I'm going to hit it with steel again to seal it up. We're sort of semi-sealed up. Uh, I'm going to deal with this, get rid of this mud, sprinkle some around the edges, rod that off, and tune that up.
right. So now the truck's gone. It's not so loud. Um, so we have our mud laid down. She's pretty flat. I mean, you know, it's it's a bit challenging again by yourself with tight mud, meaning dry, on my uh, on my own with a rod board and all of that. But um, you know, it's a super budget job for a friend. And uh, so anyhow, what we're doing now is just floating the edge. So basically, we want to not get a bunch of mud on the driveway. That's more mess we have to clean up later, right? So I'm just making sure that the top of the float is just touching the top of the existing concrete and that I'm not pushing down like that. We don't want to do that. I mean, this isn't rocket science and people say, oh, you're a concrete finish. Oh, the hardest work known to man. Yeah, it's physically challenging. You, usually it's lack of knowledge or, I'm sorry, just outright stupidity. Uh, I mean, I've worked with some really good guys over the years, and I've worked with some guys that, quite frankly, don't need to be in this business. I mean, they work you to death. I, you know, we have a saying, lose my number. I mean, and uh, I've said that more than once. But anyhow, but there's a lot of good guys out there. It's a good way, um, it's a good way to put food on your table, a nice, honest living. And uh, if you're watching this to maybe educate yourself on how to finish concrete, that's cool. If you're looking at doing this yourself, you know, you really might want to consider maybe just setting the forms up yourself. You can see our other video, um, how to set forms, concrete forms. Um, but when it comes to this, you know, it's just not so easy. And when it starts to get away from you, it's really bad. So I'm just gonna keep going here. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just run into high gear here real quick and get this tuned up before I lose my ass. This got kind of neglected up here uh, on the beginning. For example, if there were two of us here, um, while I was rotting that stuff off at the bottom around those boxes and everything, somebody would have been up here doing this. just resting this on top of the form board. And then obviously when it gets over to this pie piece, we're just making the, the whole top, uh, touching both tops. And don't be afraid with this hand float. You know what I mean? Right now the mud's still kind of wet. And uh, the name of the game right now is just to get it flat and just keep it nice and tuned up. So I'm just gonna go to right here, go back and trowel that real quick. And then I'm gonna move to the driveway part because this wood doesn't absorb as much moisture as the concrete driveway. So that edge over there is gonna take off sooner. And little pieces like this up in here will go really fast because there's not much material there and it won't take long for the moisture to leave the party. And let me tell you, when the moisture leaves the party, the party's over. So we just have a slight tilt on the trowel. Don't want anything big. And see, that reveals to us a little hole. So we'll fix that real quick. It takes a minute right now to, to fix all these little issues. But if you take the time to do that now, um, it'll make life a lot easier here in another hour or two. Another good tip is to keep your edges clean, both on the wood and here. Uh, so when, when the mud really starts to go, especially if you get behind, it starts to get really hard real fast, you're not kicking a bunch of stuff in there that you now have to work extra hard. Remember, the name of the game is flat and clean. So now that we have it, the mud laid down, which means it's been rotted off, floated, 
sealed up, and then the edge was floated with a hand float and sealed up. It's time for the next step, and that's to put an edge on it. So this is an edger tool. Um, has a little curl on it. They come in different radiuses. This is a half inch red, uh, half inch by 10 or 12 inches. Uh, this way. So the first thing we need to do. We're going to take it and actually run it backwards. The tool works like this inside to shape the material, right? But again, we're always staying clean. So this breaks the material up. It exposes the existing curl, and it also cleans the uh, existing concrete all in one deal. OK, so we flip this guy over. And just gently, I'm just letting the tool rest on the concrete. I'm not really doing much to it. As you can see, it's dry. You don't want to push down like this and leave a big mark. So anyhow, that's how the edge is used. I got to get busy, though, <laughs> and get the rest of this done. We don't want to leave any marks. Now I could get on my hands and knees and trowel that out, but this is my little mini press up. And just let its own weight take care of it. Right now we're not really worried about, uh, right now we're just worried about shaping the material. And to get around these other small objects, we use the old hand edger. This box was a little bit low, so the mud's kind of high, and it just rolls down to it. It's fine, no big deal. Oh shoot, that's all opened up. Yeah, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just following the initial joint that's there. I'm just siding down it. And we're gonna cut with this guy. Step this down a little bit. Now some people think we put these in just for looks. Well, their main function is so when the concrete starts to shrink and crack, hopefully it'll crack in these joints or grooves. Okay, and this tool is the actual finishing joiner. It's like two edgers welded together. And that just makes a nice, uh, a nice curl. So right now we're trying to get them as straight as we can. And what's going on with the mud right now is the top is drying out, but underneath it, it's still wet. Um, so right now, the most important thing is to get them all in. Then we can come back and straighten them. But if we wait too long, we won't be able to displace the material. OK, so we cut our joints with the deep joiner. And again, that makes a nice deep joint. It pushes the rocks down, gets them out of the way. And then I chased it with the uh, actual joiner, and now I'm hitting it with the Fresno again to A, wipe out the marks, and B, seal it up, and then I got to get back over here on these edges against the driveway, because they are not in too good shape, and then you want to be careful not to, when, especially by Fresnoing this way, not to close the joints up, you know, we can run over them this way a little bit. Make sure our marks are out, but see how I closed it up? So we've got to be careful. Put just a couple drops of water on there. And then open the joints and the edges, and then I'll get on it, trowel it, and broom it. Okay, so now we're using the hand edger, and we're going to try and clean these edges up. So, I mean, as you can see, the mud is still, it's not hard at all. It's just dried out. Um, 
So we have a little bit of issue here on the edge. It's not 100% like solid, like looking like clay, if you will, like it was squeezed out of a clay mold. Um, so what we could do is we can scrub up a little bit of cream with our hand float. At the same time, we're checking that we're still the same height. Um, it's just the way it's supposed to be and also so it's not a trip hazard. But concrete should, I mean, it should be flat, have clean lines. The joints should be nice and curled. The edges should be nice and curled. No extra mud out here, all ground in, looking terrible and all of that. So, we can just steal a little bit of cream off the top. And again, we're not leaning in, we're pushing down evenly. We got most of it taken care of there. We can also just very lightly get a little bit of cream. We can just very lightly get a little bit of cream on the tool and put it in there and get rid of that. I'm having some issues with the way they left the edge on some of the concrete. They edged it, then floated over it, and didn't edge it again up here on this little radius, this curve. And it was just horrible to try and, and fix. Actually took a lot of time. Okay, and then we go and seal it back up with steel. Now keep in mind that every time we do this, we're drawing more moisture out and we're accelerating the cure time. And while we're talking about that, um, you know, in the winter time, it's really cold. So we'll put chemicals in it to speed it up and maybe even hot water to accelerate, to get it to kick. And in the summertime, we'll do the opposite. We'll add chilled water um, and then maybe some chemicals to kind of stall it a little bit. There's also a spray you can put on top to help it helps keep the top from drying out uh, too much. I don't have any of that. I'm not a contractor. I'm just a, a day finisher. So I finish for different contractors. Oh, and see how I'm getting the tool marks out? Um, so I opened this edge up because by floating all this, I kind of closed that joint up and you know, we want to keep that open. Um, so we're always taking the tool marks out. But um, doing this line of work has really allowed me to be me. And that's important to me. I just need to be me. So as you can see, I'm just taking the float, right? And you gotta be careful, try not to steal too much cream off the top. So we're gonna check it with our edge, see where we're at. You know, and if you have to sprinkle a couple drops of water on there, sometimes even just wetting the tool. Well, that's a little much. Sometimes even just wetting the tool will bring enough moisture to help you out. And then the little bit of moisture over here helps sweat some cream up. But yeah, it, uh, in being a freelance finisher though, I don't, you know, I just have the tools I need. Um, it's the contractors that typically provide, you know, all the other stuff. And, but, you know, every once in a while I get a little gig and You know, we're going to start our YouTube channel showing people how to do stuff. And, well, since I've been doing this forever, why not show how to finish concrete, right, and set form? And at the same time, it'll help us become uh, better filmmakers because we're learning and growing and working in harmony together. But it's true. So anyhow, you can see how jagged this is because the mud was... I'm doing this by myself, which I really should be doing in this kind of wind. Uh, so anyhow, all the leaves blowing in there and stuff like that. You know, it's it's so hard to tell. It's always windy up here. But anyhow, we call it a fossil finish. No extra charge. But when I go to uh, do the final trial on this, I'll try and pull what I can out and pitch it to the side. So anyhow, once I get this done, I'll be in good shape. What I'll do is I'll go back and open the joints up. I'll hit it with the Fresno one more time. Uh, I'll edge it one more time, and then I'll hit it one time uh, with trowels and broom it. And that'll be it.
right, so I chased the joints, I opened them up, I'm going to hit this edge. I went from edges to joints, and now I'm going back to this edge. Uh, because the joints, man, when they get away from you and they're closed up, and you got to get into it with a hammer and try and open them back up with an iron stake or just something like that, it's, it's bad. You know, something I forgot to mention when it comes to bull floating, uh, we rotted it this way, so we bull float across the rod, okay? Then we want to cross it up, go back the other way, right? And then if we have time, cross it up a third time, go back the other way. And that's how you're really going to get it flat. I didn't have time to do that today. Uh, in fact, I shouldn't be talking right now. I better get back to work. But I realized that while I was scrubbing here uh, that I didn't explain exactly how to bull float. Another thing is we always want to keep our tools clean. The cleaner, the better. If you take a, a tool like this and put it on the concrete uh, with dry concrete on the bottom, it's bad. It'll stick to it. And so it's almost tight enough to get on. I'm just getting the tool marks out. So probably what I'll do is I'll I'll chase that edge real quick, um, and then probably go down the middle and just trial that out. Be done with it. Then I'll come back, tune the edges up, and brew it. I could go for the weight, but I don't want to spend the time, so I'm just pushing down real hard. All right, so I'm uh, nearing the end of the project, so to speak. Um, so one last time, I'm just using my hand float in a circular motion. It's, it's gonna be hard for you to see, and we only have one camera, um, but there's still little high and low spots. And uh, in fact, can you tighten up right here? All right, so with a circular motion, see that is rough, and that's still shiny. That means it's not flat. So, with a circular motion, we push down. And notice how it looks like in the parking lot sometimes too, the rotary finish. That's how they do it when you see those big parking structures. They just get out there early, they float it off like that. And so on. But anyhow, that's how we get it kind of flat. Then we'll come back over it with steel, and I'm pushing down quite a bit, you know, I'm putting some weight into it, but it tells you where the high and low spots are. Um, for some of you car people out there, it's like when you go to uh, glass out a car, you know, you primer it one color, then you mist it with another color primer, and then hit it again lightly with sandpaper with a block, and the low spots will keep the second color and the high spot, the second color will go away instantly. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like that. The same thing with the, as I explained earlier, with the bull float. We hit it one way, cross it up. And then what we do is we take the bull float and we cut the highs off and we drop it in the lows. And that's what we do with this. That's why we hold it completely flat, just put weight on it. Circular motion, we're flat. Then we trial it out and, uh, oh, what did I say earlier? It's always, when you're instructing, it's like the cooking instructors and that, you get cut. So I just did this while I was cleaning because I was in a hurry. I'm pretty caught up now, but I was kind of behind a little earlier. It was getting kind of sketchy. So, but keep in mind, be careful, they'll get you. And especially small jobs. The smaller the job, the more likely you are to get in trouble, believe it or not. So I'm just gonna work my way out. And again, for this edge, I'm just on the edge, just holding it firm, making sure it's flat. That gets some cream. Now that the mud's tightened up a little bit, I can just lean on it slightly and apply a little bit of pressure. And it won't roll it over. There we are, nice and flat. Come back and hit it with steel. Just got a little dried out while I was talking. So 
just got to put some weight. We can also sweat it out with steel. So I, I know it's hard to see from there, but it's a little bit honeycombish, uh, if you will, or like a sponge. So again, just circular motion, holding it flat. Be careful not to do that, because you can do that, and you'll get cut really bad. And I've also been using my hand joiner to chase the joints by hand, and we make sure to get those tool marks out, get the edger marks out, don't leave any hard trowel marks, and keep on trucking. Now by doing this across the joint, I mean the concrete's relatively flat. Um, if it was really super bumpy, kind of like a, like a pond or something, um, I might cave these joints in, but I've stayed up on them. I've chased them a couple times with a pole joiner, I fresnoed it out with my little fresno, keeping everything, I mean, pretty flat. The little bit of stuff you saw there is natural, but I've seen concrete work. I mean, you look like it's Gilligan and the Skipper. <laughs> just big wakes in it, just horrible, horrendous stuff. So this is relatively flat, so we can just take our tool, our hand float, um, and that'll actually bring a little cream into the joint and we lift up the, the front a little bit and then we push down on the back lifting the front back to me up and then uh, whoops so there I'm just leaning on the edge of the trowel to get the marks out got a little issue back here And it, I mean, it's not going to be 100% flat because the concrete shrinks and it just shrinks in such a way that it gets, you know, it's almost impossible to, to pour a slab and have no puddles in it at all, like a house foundation um, or a big building, uh, like a big Ikea or Costco or something like that. You know, those, those slabs, they get out there on like, sort of like lawnmowers with paddles and everything. So it's hard to control everything, but, you know, we put some effort into it and, uh, you know, just try and get to look good. So I'm stealing a little cream that way for my edge. Quick little pass with the edger. And this edger is the same as this joiner. So I can even use that just to clean the very end up if I need to or choose to. And then this round edge trowel, uh, as opposed to a square trowel, that can leave a little uh, line out there on the edge, whereas this is curved and doesn't really do that as much. And again, because this trowel's uh, an inch narrower than the average trowel, for me it's just easier to, to lift it up. You know, and you don't have to get every single little mark up. But you also want it to look good. And I'm staying back off now. It's another good reason for this trowel. Because what I'm doing now is I'm wiping out the, the tool mark. I don't know if you can see that tool mark right there. Back over here, wipe that dude right out. Pretty flat, pretty straight, traveling on. But I believe that the sign of a good finisher to be is one that fusses. You know what I mean? You see a little something, it's not right, you try and fix it. That's a good quality. But at the end of the day, physics will have its way. edge is just almost a, impossible to work. It's just horrific. You know, and I just got to quit fussing with it. I'm not able to fix it. I got to move on. So now it's time to broom.
got pretty tight. So sometimes you could drive rim it, but with this wind blowing like this, it's not going to happen. So you don't want too much water, just enough to kind of moisten the top. So I've trowled that side out, I'm going to trowel this side out, and I'm just going to broom each square as I go. Okay, so I don't have a hose out, I just have a wheelbarrow over there. So basically we're just going to take this broom, it's just a poly plastic broom, uh, made for concrete, and I'm just going to shake some water onto it and just drag the broom across. So not too much. And then the broom itself has some water in it for like the first pass. So you don't need about you don't need to worry about as much water here as you do the other piece. And then it's getting pretty tight, so I'm gonna give it a good scrubbing. And actually I can see right here because the way the sun went down the house, um, I'm not gonna need to scrub as much. All the way back, pull one, pull back. Just trying to keep the broom parallel with the joints. And there we go. There we go. Whew. Well, I'm gonna grab a bite to eat real quick and hydrate. I'll be back. Okay, so now it's time to strip the forms. Um, if you're a beginner, the best thing to do is wait till tomorrow if you can. Some of the concrete could get uh, like jammed down inside in between the forms because we cut the grass back a little bit. Uh, so we just dragged a hammer across. Make sure we don't have any mud locked in there, like so. Pull a nail, best way to pull a nail, actually is sideways, I guess. A lot of people think uh, just wrenching on it like that, you can actually break a hammer that way. And we'll give the stake a little tap, pull the stake out. Now for this board, I pulled the other stakes just so I can show you. So what we do is just hammer down on the form. And be careful, because one bad hammer will put a dent in a hard day's work. So we're going to pull away from the concrete and up very carefully. I got that nail over there. So to clean up, uh, I'll finish pulling the forms. I'll come over here with a shovel. I'll scrape up a little bit of uh, excess mud, the spillage. Then I'll take a, my trowel and a wire brush, and I'll go around the existing concrete and uh, get that stuff up. It's not appealing. And uh, yeah, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> There's some guys that, oh, knock it off. But hey, you know what I mean? Uh, we're, we're at a home. It's custom work. And uh, again, flat, clean, tools clean. Everything clean, uh, including the existing concrete. So, uh, well, there you go. I hope uh, I hope you learned a lot. Um, keep in mind, if you're going to try and do this yourself, it's pretty involved. You know, you might be able to rent tools at a rental yard or something like that, but at least consult with a local finisher. How can you find a local finisher? Well, you can contact the concrete pumpers in your area um, or the ready mix plant and just say, hey, you know, I need this. Uh, I have some concrete work I need done. Um, it's possible to go ahead and set the forms yourself and then just hire a couple finishers. Uh, we call it place and finish. You, know, you just show up, you know, and for a fee, X amount of dollars a day or something like that, you know what I mean? And, you know, you really might want to have them come by, see if they'll come by before the pour and look at your forms if you did set them up, you know what I mean? Um, but your best bet is just, just find a reputable contractor. And again, you can do that by contacting a ready mix company. Um, or pumpers, concrete pumpers, uh, in your area, and just say, hey, you know, I need, I need a good, a good uh, contractor to come out and do this. You know, somebody that's not fly by night. You know, and then go through the steps. Nowadays, we can do the, uh, the Google search, 
and all those kinds of things. You know what I mean? So check up on there. Because like I said earlier, I've worked for some really good guys and still do. And I've worked with some guys in the past that I said, lose my number. Well, hey, it's been great uh, teaching you what I know about concrete. Um, and if you'd like to uh, learn about setting forms, again, uh, we did one on how to set forms right here on this same job. So again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.